Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Diamond Download. Chase, how was your Nashville hot chicken sandwich, bro? Dude, it was great. It was delicious. My mouth was just on fire, but it was great. How are you doing? No, I'm just going to punch you tomorrow, bro. I'm not going to lie. No, I, do, be fine. do you handle spicy food well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. Oh, really? oh okay. Because every time I do, it's like the next morning is just like I have <laughs> like a, like the fiery depths of hell in my stomach. Like it's just never nice. Oh, man. No, I'll, I'll be good, thankfully. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Back in Canada. Ready to lock in, get some work done. Heck yeah. Um, make some make some content. Make some content back on TikTok. Nice. Yeah. Dialed in. Dialed in, bro. You're getting my fitness back on point because I was eating like a like a maniac in Miami for a little bit. So it's good to sort of starve myself again and be, you know, on the treadmill and shit. Amazing. Um, yo, dude. I before we jump into this, um, I got a business idea for somebody in Miami who lives in Miami and doesn't currently have anything going on and wants to do something that will basically guarantee make money. Let's hear it. I'm excited. Okay. So have you ever taken a boat out? A boat? Yeah. I'm not, not in Miami, but I've been on a boat. Actually we did do a boat in Miami. I've been on a boat in Miami and not in Miami. Okay. All right. So you might know how difficult it is to get food on the water when you're out there. There are people, there are businesses that will like, kind of get you your food maybe sometimes um and it's not super reliable and it's just like usually a waste of time and money and it takes like three hours for it to get there it's just a pain in the ass i think that if someone wanted to set up basically a, a like a like a little tent somewhere on the bay where where like boats tend to like leave from and you can like okay so if i want chick-fil-a it's a saturday i want chick-fil-a on my boat right now there's no way to get it right now. What could happen is I order Chick-fil-A to a certain address. It gets handed off to someone in this tent and then they get on a jet ski and then they bring it out to us because they could find the boat with location or something like that. No one's doing this. I guarantee people will pay a hundred dollar delivery fee. No problem. I would pay that. I'd probably pay a $10,000. Delivery- Sometimes I'm so hungry on, on a boat. I have, there's nothing to eat. And I'm just like, dude, I would I would kill, I would kill for some grub right now. So if someone wants to do that, I guarantee you'll make six figures because like you'll probably get, if you actually wanted to charge like a like a seventy nine dollar delivery fee, um, you just pay in the app, you probably get out. You know, I want to say like even if it's like a like a like twenty orders a day or something like that, it's not gonna be any crazy volume. But like you would do this by yourself. You don't even need, unless you want to have like one employee, you're paying like 30 bucks an hour or something like that to drive around on a jet ski. Like what a sick job. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think what would be cool um, to pay back on that is like, you, maybe there's two people, right? One person's the one out there picking up the food from the restaurants. The other person then, once they're getting the food handed off to them, is then potentially the one on the jet ski. Although I guess you could always do like the arbitrage of like Uber Eats where like you just order it yeah. yourself, have the drivers already do it. And then you just do that. So I guess you won't even need, you almost have like freelancers or contractors, but all through like Uber Eats or Postmates. And you can yeah. then hand it off last mile. That's what I mean. So it's like the That's Uber cool. driver, the Uber driver will drop it to that location and then yeah, yeah, yeah. receive the food and then take it on the jet ski. So like they order it for you. That's cool. Yeah. I love that idea even better. I like that. Sick. Okay. Now let's get into the real topics. That'd be like a great weekend gig, right? Like, Friday through Sunday or even Saturday and Sunday mm-hmm. just try to do like 20 orders a day yeah but you could also um you'd be surprised you could get a there's a lot of people that take boats out like on a random Tuesday I'll be sitting on my balcony I can see Brickle River from where I'm sitting and like there's yachts flying around at 10 a.m on Tuesday and they might want some breakfast sandwiches or bacon and bacon okay it's always available anyway all right first topic when is it a bad time to hire an agency and the reason I'm thinking about this is because like in my business, like I go through cycles where it's like, you know, like at the beginning, you don't really need an agency. And then somewhere in the middle, you kind of do. And then you grow a little bit more and then you're like, oh, maybe we don't anymore. And like there's agencies for everything now. Like it's not even just like the stuff that we have where it's like email marketing, like yeah. for especially for DC, like that's kind of a no brainer. But like there's agencies for content. There's agencies for like, you know, like uh, sales right. management. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah. And so like, do you like as an agency owner yourself, like, do you look at businesses and sometimes like have to make a judgment? Like, 
this is a bad time for you to hire us. Like maybe come back next year or like if they're too big, like do you tell them to just hire in house? Like what does that really look like for you? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I think there are certain businesses that like you mentioned kind of are too small. It doesn't really make sense to hire an agency. It probably makes sense to either a, just do it yourself, right? Hack it together, do it yourself or B hire like a freelancer, you know, for a couple hours a week, a couple hours a month. Um, I think those are like the two ways to do it, right? And then as you maybe grow a little bit, maybe that contractor freelancer, instead of it being them, potentially it's an in-house employee. I think like an in-house copywriter, in-house designer is really valuable because they could do it more than just email, right? They could do copy for literally every single written word, product descriptions, uh, emails, ads, landing pages, you name it. So I think things like that are actually really valuable. Um, for For hiring an agency, at least for us, like, a brand should be doing at least seven figures a year. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for them to hire us. I think for them to hire other agencies, they probably should be doing at least somewhere between three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year on the low end. Find like kind of like a smaller kind of niche agency that's a little bit less expensive. And not to be rude, but trying to find an agency that's kind of like a stepping stone where you know that your work with them is going to be probably temporary, or maybe they surprise you. Maybe it ends up being longer. Try to find an agency that you can pay a thousand to three thousand bucks a month to that can get the job done, do it hopefully well or at least well enough, and then either A, take the reins back in in house, or B, then find the next agency that's good with working with brands that are then at the scale you've grown to, right? Maybe you start with a small agency at 300K or 500K. Maybe now you're at 2 million. Maybe you want to go to an agency that specializes with brands between 1 to 10 million, right? And then you might have to pay them three or five grand a month. So I think that's interesting. And then I think as you get really, really big and as you have internal teams, I think it's less of hiring like an agency to do the work for you and more hiring an agency for the knowledge, the insights, the learnings and kind of the done with you, more of like a consultative approach. So I think like depending on the size, uh, it makes sense to have like a freelancer or do it yourself, a small agency all the way up to a large agency, and then potentially even just experts teaching and training your folks on a more of like a project or like a quarterly basis versus like a open-ended basis. What are your thoughts? So I was muted. mute. Um, I think that makes sense, but I think you definitely have like more agency experience, obviously, than I do. And so like you've seen a lot of brands. Um, I'm looking at it more so in terms of like brand side for me, where it's yeah. like, who would I hire? I, the reason I have this in the topics is because somebody's getting fired. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> One of my agents is getting fired. Um, and I get pitched all the time. And it's just like, I don't know. I, I feel like right now I really value having things in-house. Um, like I, I, um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of great agencies out there. Like I'm working with some of the best. Um, but I think like at a certain point, like you want to have, you want to own people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you really want to own the process. You want to make it so that they are answering to you and you only like, I don't know, like all of my like employees, people who work for me, like they'll answer their phones at 10 o'clock PM. Yeah. And like, that's unreasonable for you to ask an agency owner to do that. But like, if you're paying someone really well and they're on your team, like, I don't know, it's kind of nice to have, especially uh, us like under 10 people, like still kind of growing. Yeah. Um, Without saying too much, um, I don't want you to like, you know, disclose the agency, but are you, are you hiring or sorry, are you firing them? because you want it to be in-house? Are you finding them because you want a new agency? Like, are there just redundancies between like what you and your team can do versus what they can do? Is it something that was like good for starting out and it just no longer needed what's whatsoever? Like, like without giving away too much, like why are you leaving this agency? Is it their performance? Is it not their performance? Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, I think they're too expensive. They're charging way too much. And I don't think they have the right to be charging <clears throat> as much as they're charging. Okay. Um, and also like, it does interfere a little bit with my creative preferences, like stuff that I want to do is, you know, is secondary to what they want to do, like what their creative director wants to do. Yeah. Um, and so like, I don't know. And I, I just like, I feel like, honestly, dude, I'm trying to be humble here. This is something I could probably do better for myself than they could do for me. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things like that, where it's like, I would just rather do it. Cause I think I'll do a better job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, that might just be like founder brain going where it's like, maybe I won't do a better job. Maybe I'm just a little bit, maybe I'll hire them back in a couple months. Who knows? But like, I don't know. I think like, 
Um, I'll, I'll care more about the results from it as well. If yeah. I'm focusing on it myself than if they are, cause like, I know that I could be doing more for that particular channel that I had this agency for. Um, and I, I kind of just let it be like a secondary thing. Cause like, Oh, they're thinking about it. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though they're putting thought into it, it's probably still less effective than if I put my brain into it and it was like a primary focus for me. So like, that's, where I'm going with that. And also, like I said, they just charge too much. Yeah, right it's now. something I think that like you're uniquely qualified to do and it's something that you enjoy doing and something that you want to do and it's not like a distraction. You're going to save money. You're going to probably actually make more money and you're probably going to enjoy the process because you're naturally very creative and this business really is an extension of you. So if that's kind of limiting your creativity, that's kind of like a net loss for you, the team, and everyone else involved, right? So it almost is like you have to cut it um, and, and move on and just own it and destroy it. Like you're going to dominate. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, and I know my agency is not watching this song. Um, okay. You want to move on? Let's do it. Okay. So the, the second one is how would you get to 10K a month if you had no personal brand? Um, both of us are pretty reliant on um our personal brands for income which is good right because we built that up we've earned it we have super strong really solid personal brands and we have a product that people want and you know what i mean like it's it's good and it, i'm glad that we can use our own audiences to get reach for the things we want but um i'm curious sometimes i i think like i get in my own head and i think like mm, i wonder if i still got it you know what i mean like i wonder if i would have the entrepreneurial skills that i have if I didn't have this audience of like over half a million people who already like me to potentially buy stuff from me. And, you know, if, if you had to basically just go anonymous or go faceless and start something that you think would make you 10K a month, let's say within like a couple of months, like three months yeah. or something like that, like what you do. Yeah, that's a good point. Man, I, I hope that never happens. But assuming it happens and we're starting from scratch, I think there's two things. Uh, one, I think that we've talked before about this. I don't know if this was on a podcast or an Alex or where, but I like the thought of being white labeled. So say I'm a sake for sake of an email marketer or a copywriter, or someone that does some sort of marketing, let's say I would find uh, an agency where they can kind of white label my services, right? It's almost like the arbitrage of like what you would charge as a small kind of person starting out versus what they will charge the client, right? Maybe they're charging a client five grand and maybe you're charging them two grand and they don't really have to do much other than potentially project manage for that 3k a month retainer. I, I would, so I would look for folks that are scaling that have business that have overflow, but need someone that's talented. I think you have to be talented, right? I don't think you can make 10k a month. Um, if you're not great, maybe if you're mediocre, you could maybe hack it together, but it's not going to be sustainable. So I would try to find other folks that want to kind of subcontract or hire out some of the work to you as a independent contractor or freelancer. I think that's one. Uh, number two would be, I would just brute force it, right? I would send emails, uh, DMs, call people, maybe run low budget ads. I would just like try a million and one things until like my brain, my hand, my body hurt, right? Like, you know, I, I would just do whatever it took. And I think that at the end of the day, if you send enough emails, if you send enough DMs, if you're adding enough value, personal brand or not, like you're just going to make it happen. Like I think 10K a month is one of those things where it's not hard, but it's not easy. It's easy mm -hmm. enough to do that. If you brute force it, you can get there. Um, and I think a lot of people just make it hard for themselves by not putting in the work. They send like two emails and two DMs are like, no one responded to me, bro. How do I have clients? Like you, you just have to try and it, it, it's not going to happen today. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It might happen in three months. It might happen in six months, but if you put in the work, like you can't be stopped. You, you really can't be, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. So you're, but you're thinking agency, right? You're not, you're not thinking of anything else, just agency. Uh, I'm thinking about like service-based work. So agency, freelancer, contractor, something in that realm of like providing services over the internet, just because it's very low cost or free to do that. That's mm -hmm. kind of where my brain went. I mean, to your point though, on the first idea that could potentially apply to this, but you know, that really, that really uh, requires someone to, I think be a little bit savvy, have some contacts. Not that that's hard, but I think service-based stuff would be a really easy way to start. That's how I started. And that's how you started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, because it requires no capital. Yes. Um, interesting. Okay. I, I think that, okay, I'm kind of like, 
I okay. I don't think I could start. I don't think I could bring myself to start an agency or anything service based without the network that I have now or without the personal brand. Like that makes it so easy, bro. Like even when I started my agency, like I had a network. I had you. I had some other old clients and stuff that knew who I was. Other agencies that knew who I was. I had you know people making intros for me, and I also had Twitter. Like I had a decent enough Twitter audience where I could basically be like, "Hey, I'm doing this thing now. You want to work with me?" And I get some inbound from Twitter. I'm imagining that I have. Like, cause I would, I don't think I would want to do that grind again, bro. Like cold emails, cold DMs. Like I, it would be so humbling. I think if I didn't have my network or my personal brand, like in any audience, but I still had capital, I would probably try to do some sort of like affiliate marketing, like ClickBank stuff. Like just try to find some supplement on ClickBank. I was scrolling the other day. I was looking at like prostate pills. I was like, well, I don't need these, but I could sell them. I could sell the heck out of them, bro. Like I honestly think, like I could, I could spin up some ads. I could, like I could probably hire like an actor to do something like that, like you know, to make some ads, script them out, make a sales page, VSL, long email sequence, text sequence, even hire a dialer, and just like see if we could just sell prostate pills, and like hundred bucks a bottle, um. Let's say 50 bucks profit, right? For me, that's what I keep to make 10K. How many would I have to sell? 200? 200? Yeah. Yeah. 200 bottles a month. It's not that crazy. Yeah. Especially after like after three or four months and like people are re upping. <laughs> sell some prostate pills. Yeah. That's what I would do. That's scripture <laughs> money. That's interesting. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do that, but I think that's interesting. I never even thought about that. On a related but unrelated note, um, I always just kind of monitor like DMs I get and emails I get just to see like what people are selling. It's really interesting. I get a lot of people selling um, like podcasting services where like they are the agent of someone. So say you wanted to go on a bunch of podcasts. Not not that this would probably be related for you, but for someone else that's starting out, they basically will send emails to everyone that has a podcast saying, hey, I'm working with Mason. Mason's an expert copywriter. He's done, you know, millions and tens of millions of dollars in, you know, sales through his writing. You know, he'd be a great guest for the e-commerce opportunity, or he'd be a great guest for the diamond download. I've been getting mm -hmm. a lot of those consistently over months. So I probably think that that's an interesting one where maybe that's a different service you could potentially sell, where it's like you could help personal brands or founders get on podcasts and charge a per placement. Like if you get on a podcast, you get like a success fee or some kind of retainer for a range of podcasts that you think you could get them on. That's one mm -hmm. I've been getting a lot. That's just been kind of random. Interesting. One that I've been getting over the past couple of weeks that's been really interesting. Um, the acronym is EEC, which I guess is like an educational email course. I've been having a lot of people pitching me on like, hey, can we make an educational email course for you on, you know, insert X, Y, Z and topic. That's one I've been seeing like three or four people reach out about where like they're trying to work with experts to help them take their knowledge and turn it into almost like a lead magnet funnel where you educate them about email marketing or e-commerce or copywriting or LinkedIn or Twitter, whatever it is. Uh, you educate for, let's say, five to seven days. And then on the back end of that, for those people that have engaged, you send them some kind of like offer over the next couple of days. That's what I've been seeing a lot of. So I'm always just seeing and kind of looking out for while, I, while I'm going to delete a lot of these emails and mark them as spam or whatever now, um, I've just been seeing like what people are sending. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, PR is a good one. Um, someone we know who's very successful, his wife crushes with PR. I'm pretty sure ah, she's making 30, about. Yep. 30, 40K a month. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like part-time. Like, I don't think she's going all in on it. No, because I think she's like stay-at-home mom slash founder still, right? Is it talking about yeah. Adam's wife? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, cool. Well, those are all good. Um, honestly, Chase, I would love to see you spin up a funnel for some prostate pills. <laughs> love to see let's put those uh copywriting tips uh in into practice into application oh my god let's see what kind of emails we get now from this oh yeah dude if, if anyone wants to pitch us uh prostate pills i'll buy some okay. i'll stop filing until i'm 40 okay last one and this is more a topic where i kind of just like talk and you can interject at any point okay um Do it. and this is something i talked about on john coyle's pod because john coyle's doing stuff for triple well now I did his thing and uh, he, I said this there and I, I want to say it here just to amplify it again for people who didn't hear it, for the people in the back, Instagram is the best funnel for B2C and it's not even close. 
So, and the reason I'm bringing this up, because this is new information that I've gotten since I've done that pod. So it's even more, it's even stronger than it was. We started running, we started an ad campaign um, for my thing at the beginning of the month. I am not joking. We have spent $2,400 in January and from meta revenue, we have made back like after adjustments of everything, because we there was a bigger number, but we thought it was wrong. It's still twenty two grand that we've made back on twenty four hundred dollars in spend. Wow! Can like you believe 10X. that? Yeah, basically ten x. And so, the way that that's going. So, for anybody who cares, we have like a a, a dollar case study that people buy. There's an upsell that's like twenty nine dollars that they can buy also. Um, and it's just like a little mini crash course for copywriting, super cheap. It's pretty good. It's like an hour long. And then we got a, a one-time offer for uh first client playbook, which is 297. Some people take that. Sure. But then, so once they do that, we have dialers hitting them saying, Hey, how was it? Do you want to book a call? Join our circle. And then, so we have, we have that running too. And um, so between like, and we also have emails and SMS once those people are in the funnel. So between dialers, email, SMS, and Instagram, wow. we're very profitable because here's what happens. Wow. Instagram is like sort of like the main social media channel, right? Like because yeah. everyone you need Meta to spend money on, everyone spends money on Meta. But like most people aren't seeing those ads on Facebook. They're seeing them on Instagram because yeah. they're just scrolling, especially my demographic, right? All young dudes are not scrolling Facebook, scrolling right. Instagram stories, stuff like that. They, cl- they, they might not click on the ad, but they'll click on my profile. And they'll, and so a well-optimized Instagram profile is like the best funnel ever. So you have your bio, right? You have what you're about, you know, maybe, maybe something in there, maybe a little link to get them further down. Um, mine just goes to YouTube. Okay. We, uh, you got, you got, uh, your follower count, which is basically social proof. So if you have, I mean, I'm, I'm still small. I got like 62,000. They see that they're like, okay, this person's obviously not like a bot. And then they also see all my posts, right? So they have pin posts where like it shows a little bit of lifestyle stuff. There's like a little case study thing. And then like a viral video that people might've seen where it's like, oh, I know this guy. And then um, and then I have all kinds of content that's like educational and inspirational and stuff like that. They can see that. They also have stories where sometimes doing call to action, stuff like that. I can also go live. Owning audience on an Instagram is so powerful because like, not only is it sort of like email where you can just blast out with like a story or something like that, you can interact with people. And then you got DMs, especially if you have many chat. You know, many chat is, oh, we talked about this last time. Yeah. Many chat. If you have many chat installed and you can sort of automate some responses and stuff like that, you can make it easy. It's like a CRM for Instagram to see who's in your DMs. Like you're, you're selling in there. Yeah. You, you might be able to do outbound. Like, I had my setter yesterday. There was like a poll that I put up and everyone who voted on the poll, he was just going outbound, just hitting every single person up who voted on the poll. So smart. So you have people coming in, you have traffic coming in from, from ads. You also have stuff from organic and it's all leading to this, like ultimately like this basically pro like this profile that like has everything someone needs to learn about you and like want to convert. Yep. And it's just magic, bro. So the call to action here is for anybody who like, is building a personal brand on Twitter or TikTok or LinkedIn. Yeah. And you have a B2C offer and you're not using Instagram, I think you are burning money. It is yeah. it's not it's not easy to grow it, but it's so rewarding, bro. Like you can honestly like if you have good ads and like a couple viral videos a month, you can do Thanks like 5 to 700,000 yeah a month. Yeah, yeah. Just from Instagram. It, depending on how how expensive your thing is. Like if you have like a down sell and like a 5K offer, bro, you're doing half a million a month, no problem, just from Instagram. Dude, it was wild. The last time you talked about Instagram, you like inspired me. And I don't have that many followers. I've got maybe 20 something thousand followers, not many. But I put up a story or something like, hey, uh, respond to this post with LinkedIn if you want more on my LinkedIn service. Bro, I had like 80 or so, 90 people, something like that, DM me. Like, and, and th- those are people that have just been sitting, waiting, watching that, like, I wasn't doing anything with, like, you know, 80 people, mm-hmm. and now obviously all of them converted. There was a handful of them that converted, but, you know, 500 bucks a month, I must have done a couple thousand dollars of MRR off of a story with no optimization, not a huge following. So the fact that, like, you're dialed in and you got this, like, that's huge. That's awesome. I'm stoked for you. Now just spend more money. Bro, yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, so we're going to start. We're going to up the budget by like, I think Ben said like 20%, 25% every single day. Wow. Um, 
Nice. Every day. And then we also hopefully by the end of the week we'll have YouTube ads going too. Oh. Oh, and I'm hiring. I just hired another sales guy today. Oh, and we're hiring three more setters by the end of the month. Oh, like, dude, I'm so fired up. Wait, yeah, so can we hear a YouTube update in maybe about a month or two then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hire a sales manager. Everything's going good, bro. Everything's Sick. Going good. Congrats. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, man. Very excited. Hell yeah, that's um, a great episode. Great episode. Anything else you want to say? No, that was great. That's wrap. Let's wrap it. Thanks everybody for watching the Diamond Download. Message either one of us on our respective platforms if you want to learn more about anything we do. We're always here to answer questions. Also, comment on this video. No one ever comments on these videos. It's always just one dude who's like, great vid, guys, with a yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you to you, but everybody else, get active, man. I know you guys are seeing this stuff, and I know you want to comment. You just haven't had a reason to. So comment what you had. Um, you know, Comment um, what you want to do when you grow up. <laughs> sounds good, and, uh, you. And we'll, see you. we'll see you next week. All right, sounds good. Cheers.